the advantage for us is being able to say, in your busy lives, come with us, go on this journey, discover something about these composers, because you know, for Schubert, for example, there may be five or six pieces very much in the popular imagination. But you know, we're talking about an output of a thousand pieces. Um, and how much there is to discover, how much there is to understand about Schubert as a human being, how much we understand, and this is one of the Radio 3 key selling points, I think, of our unique programming. The context of this work is so vital. Uh, and the other thing which is marking out this particular series is the amount of live music. You know, more than half of Radio 3's output is, is live music. And so it's really important that what we do in, in these festivals actually reflect what Radio 3 does the rest of the time. I think it's really interesting thinking back to 2005 when Radio 3 for the first time cleared its schedule for one composer and at that time it was Beethoven. And at, at that particular moment, um, I think we could have taken a number of decisions. We could have decided to do the complete works of Beethoven over, over a year, for example. We could have decided to do the complete symphonies, piano sonatas, string quartets, over a certain period of time. But I think in the time poorness of people's lives, to cut through with something really substantial and groundbreaking, um, we took that bold decision to say, all the works, one week. Um, and the way that cut through and got broad attention was very revealing about how our audiences love the idea of being able to immerse themselves in something. And immediately that had happened, uh, our listeners and lots of other commentators were saying, OK, who's next? And Schubert was already on people's lips at that particular time because we knew that you know, at some point we probably would have to do it um, because simply he's too great a composer to, to ignore. I think one of the real powers of music is the fact that it exists as music and you can't put it into words. If I were to try to describe a piece of Schubert, um, the words that I would use, that I would think were incredibly powerful and tell you everything you wanted to know and immediately conjure up the atmosphere of that piece would be already lost by the time it actually reached you, your brain, in the way that you would actually understand it. So I think what we're left with, and, and that is its real power, is the music itself. I think what's extraordinary about Schubert is the way that so many different people from different backgrounds, when they hear a piece, it unlocks in them a particularly powerful emotion. Um, and it speaks to the composer, in this particular case, uh, Schubert's ability to, to console, to inspire, to stimulate um, so many different sorts of emotions and get played with. Uh, but also because this music is at once very, very simple and at the same time very deep and rather complex. Um, what's really important at this particular moment is that this isn't a Schubert year. This isn't a particular Schubert anniversary. Of course, every year is a Schubert anniversary, and there's quite a, a neat number around that we can talk about. But it's not a particular bicentenary, or it's not a particular centenary. Um, it's absolutely right, though, it feels to me, that there's something about our times um, which will find you know, a, a huge resonance in the, in the music of Schubert. However much you know about it, um, however little you know about it, I think there's a world there that's waiting to be explored.